I'd always been diagnosed with a heart murmur. So as a child, the doctors always detected that my heart wasn't beating correctly, but I was always, I was always followed up with, ah, this happens. It was never a hindrance to me. It never, I was never tired or never really had any major issue from just having a heart murmur. I just knew that's what I was diagnosed with. At 51, I had open heart surgery to repair a congenital heart defect. I was diagnosed with a coronary cameral fistula that resulted in me having to have open heart surgery and the maze procedure was to correct an atrial flutter. I remember the day, it was a Sunday morning, I was in the shower. I heard the word AFib because of the commercial for all the drugs that treat AFib, but I didn't know that that's clearly what I was in because my heart was racing and I just thought I needed to go lay down. I was supposed to speak at an engagement at my church and I said, look, I don't feel too good, I don't know if I'm coming, but I still pressed my way like we do and I went and I spoke and I went about my life but I also made an appointment, call my cardiologist. I thought like a heart rate of like over 100 was normal. They were like, oh my God, you could have had a stroke. That's the grateful part of me. But it wasn't until I was in, my cardiologist said, there's nothing more I can do with you. I'm gonna send you to, there was an adult pediatric congenital heart specialist. Say that five times. Adult pediatric congenital heart specialist who at a children's medical center who literally their focus was adults with similar situations to mine. And um, after some tests, I remember one of the doctors on the staff, they, he came out and he came into the room and he was like, ah, we know what to do, we can treat that. And I remember looking at him almost with, my, with tears in my eyes saying, you do? That I will tell you, was probably one of the best feelings ever. My scar that I proudly has morphed, and I look at it, I'm reminded every time I look at it, even you know, two years later, I'm like, wow. But I'm also very grateful and very thankful. And so, I don't think I gave myself a, a chance to have a sad story or to be depressed over it, because it really didn't stop me from really doing anything. Everything the doctors told me to do, I did. Women, men, or anyone, but specifically when it comes to our health and our heart health, we have to put ourselves in the center of what we do. Typically, we are the center of our families, we are the nucleus, we are the heartbeat for everyone else, and we tend to put ourselves on the back burner. Because like we said, it was, it's the number one killer for women. Don't run yourself ragged and think that you can get up. We are not superwomen. Take off the cape, and if you need help, I think this is the hardest thing for black women um, is asking for help. If you can't advocate for yourself, you got to ask someone to help you. And when life takes you off course, when you have a pandemic or when you have something that traumatically happens, like having to have open heart surgery, I got to go back to the center of who I am and in what I believe and get back to the rhythm of life.